Thank you for allowing me to come uh, this evening to visit with you a little bit. And most of the time when I see you guys, we're either at Walmart or the store or Casey. <laughs> it seems like it's everywhere. Let me tell you a little bit about what I do. Obviously, I'm not just an attorney. I'm also a city judge. And so in that respect, I get to see the juveniles that are caught out and ticketed by the police. And I've done this now for going on about 11 years. And I'd say the last five years have been particularly interesting and challenging. The demographics of Henrietta are changing, and they're changing not always in the best of ways. We have a higher maintained level of low income housing. We have a lot of motels that have been retrofitted to temporary housing that some people are using long term. And so what happens is, and I don't want to offend anyone by any inappropriate terms, but I would call it more of a transient population, a group that is hasn't been here long and is here because the cost of living is next to nothing. Uh, there are social services. There are a high level of church groups. So these people that we see and that you will see more traffic, foot traffic during the day are these families. And these families, uh, these individuals have families and these kids are at school, what we hope to be at school. So where th I started seeing things is I started seeing these children coming in that are far more brazen than ones that I'd ever seen before. And two, we are now in an epidemic in this town when it comes to a lot of the juveniles. There are, there's probably not a person at this table, either you haven't been stolen from in town or you don't know someone immediately to you that's had their vehicle broken into. There are always chains, there's always cologne, things like that but not always like I had mine broken into. I had a leather briefcase and forget that, but they took the aqua di Gio and the loose change. And it's going over and over again. So I put a rule in place that on these dual offenders, your parents have to come to court with you. You should come in and sit with me just one Monday. It's one Monday a month. And the children and their behavior is a symptom. When you meet the parents, there's where the core is at. Sometimes it's something they can help and sometimes it's something they can't. They're just not well geared. But if you checked the police logs in this town, 80% of the time is, is taken from the police servicing these particular areas that we talked about earlier, uh, the, the motels, low income housing, uh, apartment complexes. One of the leading indicators of criminal activity is truancy. If you look at these same families, these children are the highest problems that are going on in the district right now. Your superintendent, your principals, they can't administer. If you wonder why they're not able to get certain things done, is because from the time they get here to the time they leave, they're in triage mode. Every one of a whole list of these students are habitual problems, but you get zero opportunities at home that the parents, and not always, but there's a large portion of these students whose parents aren't really involved to be for the long game. There, it's, and a lot of times you'll see these students drop out because the school couldn't get to my kids. But these kids, like right now, we're just now getting into October, many of them have seven, eight absences. I can punish the students all day long but I'm not gonna get results that I need. You have to get to the parents. And if you talk to any educator, you, you see things on a daily basis that is some cause of indicator of a fire. You see the smoke all the time. But if you look around in this community right now, we're on our own. I dare you to call DHS and they're gonna laugh you out. And we're under, uh, understaffed, over, uh, underfunded, and overworked. So you call the district attorney's office. They're gonna say, we don't have the resources and you're gonna to have to get with one of the other state agencies. So there's only one left, and that's OJA, Office of Juvenile Affairs. They're not even gonna look at us right now. How many of us caught last year the school scores that came from the uh, Department of Education? So our middle school 
at a D minus with right at a 60. The high school, I think, was at a 70, and the, and the elementary is at a 73. If you look at those numbers and look at them in the raw element, you could start to get upset at a school district until you start reading what's behind those numbers. And one of the huge factors behind those numbers is average daily attendance. So when you look at the grades, there are all these little bonus cards that you can get. We get practically none of them because of our average daily attendance. So you lose money from the state every day that you have the high level that you have right now. You lose scoring with the Department of Education every time these rates continue to go higher on the absent rates. The city, you're thinking, well, is this a school problem? Absolutely not. If you were looking to move into this community right now and you pull up a site like Zillow, what are these sites doing more and more? They have other links to their page. And in fact, if you want to know how the school district is, click right there on Zillow. And it's going to take us, and it's not going to advertise that we just passed the largest school bond in the county history. It will not advertise the cutting-edge programs that we're putting in. It's advertising that we are barely deficient, or we are barely, you know, proficient in middle school, and poor in high school, and barely making in elementary. That is not an accurate image of this district nor of this community. But everyone is throwing their hands up in the air right now because everyone wants to find a problem that no one wants to be involved in what the solution is. And I think there is a solution, at least to make things much better. But that solution even has its cost, and otherwise we would have done this years ago. But the, the program I'm putting forth to you is a truancy court. And the truancy court would do just as it says. It's The goal is to cut down on truancy and to help manage the high maintenance issues that are going on today. When I say manage, I'm talking about programs through youth services to help a family with some life skills and life services. The jailing of a parent is the very last resort. But I have to get them serious because the goal is one of two things. Either they start having skin in the game with their child's education and they're part of the solution, not when you call them up and they're saying, what did you do to little Johnny? Somehow we have to get that dialogue back what did he do? Because that's, that's the school that I grew up, but that's not the mentality of a lot of the people that come up here today. We need to launch something that gets people excited about this again. Because there are so many good things that are going on. But we've had some bad PR the last couple of years. Let's just face it. We have. And I'll go around to other schools or colleagues and say, what's going on in Henrietta? Well, why? Because they read the little social media excerpts out there and they're missing on all of the good things that are going on. Not all of them. There's a lot of good focus going on in the schools right now. But this is a bigger problem than I can even possibly go to tell you. And I feel stupid like I'm coming to the game late because I'm telling any of these teachers or former educators something they've known for their career. It's just, what do we do about it? The program is... Here's, here, we've been meeting between the school and some city officials, not the school and uh, not the city council. Uh, the mayor was just brought in this last week to or this last meeting to talk about logistics, about where we go from here. The idea is that the cost of an officer be split between the city and the school. And I know that's absolutely ridiculous words to come out of my mouth. You need to talk about putting someone on the payroll but we do. We're looking at the outside cost of this officer for the school's part to be anywhere. And these are on the higher numbers, but I'd rather be high than not. Between twenty dollars and $25,000 a year. If the cost can be lower, we're going to make them lower. That's not going to be, we're going to take the cost of the program and we're going to split it evenly between the two, but we're telling you it will not be more than twenty-five, dollars And we hope that this thing is considerably less. But for this to work, you can't have some Tom, Dick, or Harry to come off the street. It has to be an officer that's specially selected, that's properly trained, that is not going to have perhaps this new cadet vibe when you get out of cleat, very hard to approach. It needs to be someone that's seasoned, that the children will get along well. Because this has started a dialogue that we haven't had in quite a while. And the school is opening their doors and saying, okay, officers, we want you to be able to come up. 
We want you to start doing some walkthroughs. We want to feed you some lunch while you're out here. I mean, the things that we know need to happen, and none of these are, are the burning bush in itself, but it's just the start of a really good dialogue. Because in this day and age, it's scary. It's absolutely scary what these kids are finding at home. As you get the prescription pill problem handled, here's going to be this new flux of heroin that comes in, and that's really where the problems are going to start. But to have an officer that can, and the police are excited. They are overly excited because now, from a policing standpoint, I'm being on the doorstep of a house that I probably wanted to look at for a long time, and I knock on the door, they open the door, I have what they call plain view. I have the lawful reason to be there, so anything that I witness or observe, I can take into account and use in my case. I mean, this has the possibility of being this symbiotic relationship between the city and the town to really co-benefit each of them. That's why I think it's only fitting that everyone have the same amount of skin in the game. It's not going to be perfect this first year. It won't. And we have some other goals to go along the currency, but we want to start it simple. We absolutely want to start it simple. And we want to have a program that the kids can at least develop a better rapport with the police. The police certainly have a better rapport with the children. You start getting a better rapport with the children, what do you have? You have witnesses. You have kids coming to school talking about their problems, what's going on in their house. You have students talking about other students because you have dealers in your school. You probably know that, but I'm just telling you, you have them. Every school does. It's what are you going to do to be proactive and how to minimize the dangers that your, your other children are in and how to provide services for the kids that are involved in that activity. But there's a lot of thought that's gone into this, and I know you've had a lot of noble ideas, and if this one's not one that makes it, I understand. But I at least feel that my family, have, we've been very blessed. And I just want to, if I can, get off the sidelines a little bit and maybe lend some expertise. So do you have some questions about this? I, I visited with Mr. Melville about this for a little bit. He, he, was, uh, he, he was pretty enthused about it, and we talked about the financial state, and uh, we could probably afford that. And uh, But then we got to talk about the time, and I know we were only in school 179 days or whatever we are, so then the other time, the other time he would be uh, with the police department. The, the way so, that it would have to work, because we're, we're going under the jurisdiction of the city of Henrietta. Mm -hmm. This officer has to be a city of Henrietta police officer. Mm -hmm. Now, the officer is going to be assigned primarily with the school to begin with. But we're also anticipating that probably in the beginning, most of the time this officer is going to be towards truancy. The hope is if we are really at it, really broadcast this program and really get to the people, that before too long it becomes a deterrence program, not something that's going to happen. On it and, you know, we're going to have to have court at least twice a month, maybe more, depending on the program in the beginning. And, and as far as in fines or things like this, this is not going to be a money-making program. There are not the majority of the people that are going to receive these kind of contacts are the ones that are already on bare minimum resources. You're just not going to get blood out of a term. Right. So they're punishment, they're punishment, because will be for counseling or or something with the trial fairs or the pre-oaks or something, you're going to suggest that to the parents? Absolutely. The parents. Well, there's not going to be any suggestions. Yes, when the punishment yeah, comes down on the parents, right. that's going to be the punishment. Right. Not monetary punishment. And, well, it very well could be. <coughs> Certainly there will be co court costs. Right. But where you're looking at is you're looking at some alternative punishments that are short of expulsion. Because when you expel or if they're suspended, you lose funding. So where some of this is discussed is the possibility of having a mutual room, a punishment room for in-school detention and having parents serve that time. You know, I, I don't want to use these extreme examples, but I'm just telling you the idea would be do really some like things that, that are outside <laughs> of the kids box. In there, yeah, because you, you know this in dealing with other parents. You know, there are some parents that are so laissez-faire about their kids, so you know what, I give them 20 bucks, I wish them the best of luck. Then there's the ones that want to walk around the corner and just make sure they get in there, make sure they know where they're at, make sure they're coming home on time. That latter group of parents are not your target parents. It's the other one of the two. And so what gets them going the most, get their electrical device away from them, have them sit down for a period of time to see you can't 
drown yourself or numb yourself to these things in the world. You sit there and you listen to what's going on. You've got some confidentiality issues too that we would have to take care of with the school attorney. Perhaps participating in this program, there's a pre-signed waiver ahead of time to participate. <coughs> Maybe a program that we want is mandatory for all children and their parents to sign up ahead of time. But there, those are the devils in the details. But that would not be formulated just by me. That, that school would be heavy on that side, helping furnish some examples because you're in the business of, of you know, punishment with behavior modification. Of course, Mr. Noble talked about the number of days, 1,280 days or whatever. Right. We're only going to pay half the salary anyway. Yeah, yeah I'm okay with that. What about the, uh, so the days we are in school, um, I mean, this is, is he going to work? And, you know, you know, what, what, Let me give you more shift? detail. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because it's going to take some logistics on our side. We are going to have to hire an officer that's going to be union, and he has to only work for us. And we're going to have to set him up with, a, with an eight-hour shift. So it may be seven to four. It could be any one of these. And then what the goal would be, primary work and then start of the day, is working traffic, be out available to work assistance. I'm telling you, I was picking up my daughter today. It's crazy <laughs> up here. Or when I'm dropping her off, the signs that someone added very nice saying, don't pass a, a, a flashing light on the school parking lot. And I want to say, you can't fly, pass a parking flashing light anywhere, but people do it right up here. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and again, there is there is a sense of disconnect that's been there with the city and the school for a period of time. Not long. And the way that these things happen, they happen at no one's fault. But I love my community. I really do. But it, you have to know this area to be able to figure this out. And this is a unique issue. We have a unique problem that doesn't exist in all the different areas that you would think. We are perfectly made for this to the problems that we have. But we can very well help ourselves out because there's enough migratory population that if they decide they don't want to be a part of the solution they will leave and they'll go into the next community where perhaps they're not trying to be as proactive getting people involved I guess my question was we're not going to see a situation where we've got this this new officer working Monday Wednesday Friday first shift seven to four and then Tuesday and Wednesday third shift or second shift where he's not really even passing the school it's not oh, no, no 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 when we're in the school session, it, it, he's going to be working. He's going to be working, but that doesn't mean he'll work all the time here. If this program gets off his feet and he's worked truancy, or she, in four hours, he may spend the other four hours elsewhere. Or if there is a critical need, an emergency call, he leaves, or she leaves, just like that. But I think we would all expect that. Oh, yeah. the, and that would be my biggest concern there. And that's going to be the one case that we're, this would be a trial and error. Because the city, you know, it'd be very quick if it looked like the city were trying to pick up. The city didn't know anything about this. I'm the one that's gone to them with this. But, you know, we don't want to pay for something that we're not getting the benefit of. This is just the start of what the chief wants to do up here. I'm talking about time commitment. Because this is where it's at right here. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, I think we've learned the more that we can police this area, the more that the community polices the rest of it because you will see a decline in the break-ins if we can cut down on the truancy. We had this, in 02, my last year, we had this, you know, Amy McGuire, we had a grant, which those are out the door anymore, the government don't even, but suggesting if he does do this when we start the truancy part is we had her after at 8.30, 8.45, she checked each site's absentee list. In that first week or two of school, it's where we really hammered that, when those, that <clears throat> officer would actually, she had an officer, but that officer would actually call those people, where's your kid? And if that could be set into motion the first couple of three weeks, a good way for them to know, hey, there's a trendy officer out there, and they do that two or three that, weeks. That's, that's the that absolute really, goal right there. Right, but and, who's to say after six weeks of doing this, and Maybe it opened their eyes. And then we're paying someone for a whole year of service. Well, we can also use them, just like you said, for I'd rather have somebody here than not here anyway. So that's just like a security type thing. Well, I, I mean, agree, but all as good. if you can guarantee them being here. I don't, I don't want to get in a situation where the truancy is down and the concern is not as great. 
and then all of a sudden our person gets pulled for more city work. The, the question is, can you afford not to? Yes. Because and because I'm just saying, and I can't stand Dr. Phil. And, and I'm, my wife is going to kill me. Sure. But I have this thought. Yeah, you know, I've been doing it my way this time. How's that working out for me? Yeah. It's not because we're not equipped to handle this problem. We weren't. This was, this shouldn't be anything that your administrators are having to deal with. When we're sending Kelly Fuhrer to the front door and she goes mm -hmm. to these parents' house, and some of these, I and wouldn't go up without an officer going goes with them. That oh, is yeah, an absolute nightmare. Sure but just Seriously. in meeting up this That's summer, dangerous. spending so time with these gentlemen over there, just they can't com they can't finish a conversation and their phone's mm -hmm. going off. So and it's going to be one of four of the same people that I've seen them do every day. Well, and I think the positive side, they can build a rapport with the kids. That is a huge well, thing. This is a even in the park, or out in Nichols Park, just they'll they'll see a familiar face and they'll befriend him. And and, and if you know her, any of these yeah. officers personally, I'm saying they're going to love this. Yeah, they're going to love the opportunity you know, to be able to. cry for discipline. You know, they, they cry out for discipline. They want to be disciplined. And if we have an officer, because Mama's not disciplined, then they, I think they would look up to an yeah. officer. I think mine used to. I think it's a very positive thing. Can we use them for other things? Like you're talking about the dealers that we have on campus, and we all know that we do. We probably all know who they are. I mean, is that something else that can be looked at by them? You bet. And, and without saying where the program would go, but you have to know he is law enforcement, or she will be law enforcement. And they despise that as much or more than anyone else. But right now, if you have kids that are being bullied, you're not getting that addressed. You can't get that addressed with the crises that are going on. Because like the police department, your administrators work from top priority down to the bottom. Sure. And so the average irritation or the calls for bullying, I'm sure they get answered, but they won't probably with the same priorities that you have they a five. Have to, because we have to answer to the state department for every single person. Well, imagine if you only had those kind of problems, to, right, or that you were without we some of these other crises. You bet. It's a matter of <coughs> service. You know, if you're making the calls, it's a better service. It's a better intent to provide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Construction. Wow. If someone's objecting or they're cheering me on, <laughs> they're breaking into the cars. That's right. <laughs> what's, our, what's our target date? ASAP. Um, I meet with the city on their agenda a week from tomorrow. Um, we would love to get this started next semester, but there's a lot of work that would have to go into it. And so the earlier that we get approval, the better shot that I have of getting it put together because I, the school has to have the largest hand in this. Well, in the police as well, because you're going to know some of the the triggers where we need to do a safety search. You know, yeah, we're keeping in mind how many it takes to to fail, but we can certainly have factors that trigger things and a safety welfare check if they miss, you know, two or three days, something like that. I mean, things that from your experience tells usually something's going on in this home historically. Those would be the perfect ones to hit first. I know somebody who would be a good resource. When I went to McAllister, they hired an officer that year when I was at McAllister. And McAllister had their own police department on campus. He was the only officer, but they had their own. Um, he's now at Low Tech, but he truancy went from here to here. Mm -hmm. I'd love to talk to him. His Absolutely. name's uh, uh, Immunity Chuck. This is first name. I think it's lesson right now. But he's at Votech now. I know in Houston, because my nephew was a pill, <laughs> he had, if he got in trouble at school, he had to answer to the, the city judge. Mm -hmm. You know, their discipline was through the city judge, and he would be fine. Or his, you know. Eventually, theirs were be like mm -hmm. yeah. that. It's just maybe awesome. one mm -hmm. more layer that you're, if, if I have a structure in juvenile court that is laid out that could help alleviate at least some of the behavioral issues that maybe it falls onto my plate, then that's more than you that you guys can do. That's where we'd like to see this, but I don't want to buy off more than we can chew initially. Right. But I don't think that that's out of the realm because as the truancy lets down, maybe the focus and the time shifts to that. But there's going to be, I think, plenty to do. Any questions? 
written No, I, I don't. <laughs> and again, because everything's been so... Yeah, not yet. Not yet, but uh, if, if I get approval here, then what I would ask that it be contingent upon review of final plan. You know, maybe a, you know. And it will take tweaking of the union contract because right now they work 12 hour shifts and so we would have to renegotiate that contract if the city decided to be on board also. The city is biting off quite a bit right, right now and that we're not asking for you to do. Uh, because so we're going to hire a new officer. It's not. I mean, I mean, you may use one of your officers that you have, but you're. Then, so then it would be replaced. Yes. But I mean, the we absolute. Have one in mind, but. What's the chances that we can get that negotiated that negotiated out to where you have? I think they. Uh, I, I think it's the one we're talking to. Would I think would. Yeah. Be easy to do it. So it'd be just this officer's position is eight hours, five days a week. Correct. As far as the school is concerned, correct. But the entire eight hours a day will not be spent here. It may be all of it initially, but it's going to be kind of finding that happy spot there. But it'll be the same officer. Same officer is what the goal is, absolutely. It doesn't work well if we've got different officers coming in. No, I do want different officers to come in, but I want that one to have the primary responsibility. Could that also not be hired by the city for a 12-hour, but they would just be kind of designated this? No, we probably would have to be on a shorter uh, shift so that in order to make less it. money, get, though, for them. Yeah. Well, they would still get 40 hours. It's just by yeah. the union contract that you oh, have yeah, to negotiate it. Right. Because right. Right. if we put them 12 hours, then they could come back and file a grievance and right. say, uh, no, my contract says 12 hours. That's right. But the overall goal is to just even if it's not with just this truancy officer always, that any of the officers feel they can come up and part. And I'm sure they've always been able to, mm -hmm. but this is going to be a, an effort to really push that and to really get a, the community to see what this presence is. I think you're going to have a lot of relieved parents. I think there's going to be a lot of parents that are going to be excited about it. The ones whose kids come to school. And I really think the kids will be excited about it. You know, potentially seeing someone around, the, the kids that maybe feel threatened or bullied and like I said children they they want to be disciplined you know they don't get it at home and that'd be someone that they could build a rapport with I agree. Mm -hmm. it's good. It just to, it's to, I, no, I love the idea let me say that the, the logistics of it seem really difficult dealing with unions and dotted lines and straight lines to whoever this person is going to report to but the part that's hard for me to deal with is if we are going to pay, we are going to pay for half a salary and have no direction over this over this, this person that we're paying for. It's like you'd have to answer somebody here. But the officer has to answer to a police chief only. Yeah. Now, is he going to be primarily assigned here? Yes. That will you will then get coordination between the three buildings. If you guys get into this and this at any time smells like, you know what, the city's right on our backs to get this full, then get out of it. I don't but think I, it's a ploy to get out of office. Right. I, just, I just don't want, I just, I mean, you, you, one person changes in the, in, the, in, the, in the mixture and it could really throw it for a loop. You know, our police chief goes, I mean, he's the next assistant chief of Tulsa, you know, or whatever happens, happens, I mean, he just gets this great new job or he has this epiphany where he wants to leave and then a new chief comes in and he has a total different thought process of what he wants to do with this person. And we have no control. But Your sure control is to get out of the program. At that we're probably gonna, I, mean, I assume we'll be in a contract. Yeah, but we're, this is not going to be a two-year or three-year deal. Yeah. You know, it can't. I hope at some point it could be, mm -hmm. but this is trial and error for a bit. So. Well, we can't, we can't contract we, beyond we, our fiscal year. Yeah. So we, now, the problem is oh, okay. we, we'd like to... We'd like to do it as long as we can, but I'm looking to see how comfortable that you can be doing this because we have to bring an officer on, and this officer is going to be a new hire. We can't get rid of him in six months. So we're taking risks, too, and we're not asking you to ride the entire ride of that. But, you know, it's kind of that mutual need that exists. It makes it a really good potential remedy. What is the, what is the city's the fiscal year, Mayor? June 30th, it's, it's July 1st. So you're saying that this is going to be 
just like ours. Higher. If they if they decide to do this, it's going to be to the end of the fiscal year. Yours is June thirtieth, which ours is also. So mm -hmm. this will just be a half year job. Either. But you know, this is all that you actually probably could contract to right. do. Yes. It's for the remaining. Right. Year. That's what I was thinking. If if you would can. entertain that, that would give us the start that we need. And then reevaluate it the into, as we get into the summer. Plus, needs to measure it by success earlier. Mm -hmm. Cuts the price, man. But when the the what are our goals? Mm -hmm. These are, you know, certainly to meet. And I forget the percentage. It's either at ninety-five percent. Look to the state criteria that are triggers of these bonus points to take advantage of that at least if we can with pure attendance. I certainly think that that would be an admirable, you know, because the bonus points you get from that go straight to your report card. So if it's a five bonus point, you've got five, you know, that's the difference between a 60 and a 65. And then you get other points, achievement, milestones. Or get the kids here to school. Mm -hmm. The kids come to school, learning mm -hmm. hers. Mm -hmm. So have you spoken to Mr. Noble about this after they had their meeting? Right. And has he spoken with Andy about this? Uh, he has, but there is some wording to get ironed out. That they'll have to. If we got approved. That's exactly Andy is who I would work with now to try to pick <coughs> this up because I'm thinking of it from the legal side as far as in the municipality, right. and then. But I need his help on the confidentiality and confidentiality side to make sure that we don't do anything that would violate um, any kind of ethical practice with the schools. So we certainly have to have a control of the information. You know, I can get legal access to it, but we have to make sure we define what that's going to be. You know, I'm all for the truancy program, and I'm all for help working with the city to help control the crime here and to get our kids on a better track. And, you know, your presentation is awesome, but what you have given me is what you think the truancy program, the outcome will be. But I don't have a lot of what this means for our kids and what the specifics are about the truancy program within itself. And so, you know, if we move on this today, and go with this recommendation to begin the process, it feels like we're approving it before we actually know what we're approving. Well, Brady, no one's going to be able to give you those numbers. So that'd be like I saying, I, I want to do it. I want do to know it. what the program is. The program would be designed with this. It would be, it would be implemented with triggers at the school. When is enough absences enough to trigger? We would have court at least twice a month and maybe more in the beginning. At that session, I'd get to know the attendance history and record, and I would have a school staff to tell me what the history is, at least on the attendance, and then I can ask other questions at that point as far as behavioral issues, things like that. I can ask questions about the parent's demeanor, parent's participation, if at all. And, if the, if, and then at that point, it's going to be up to me to make a decision based on what I've been presented, based upon the factors that, that the parent has told me, and based on the child's performance. I'm looking to have some, I'm going to say punishments, but um, behavioral opportunities that could you know, in, initiate a number of things, could initiate youth services in Alton Mulgee. The district attorney's office has pledged to me their support to prosecute the toughest of the toughest ones, the ones where they're just laughing at us. We'll have a renewed support from there. This could be anything from community service for the parents. Right, and I understand or it could that be the, ultimately the punishment will be determined by you based on the child's past. I, I understand that. Um, You're wanting to know what's the direct impact it could have on the students? Uh, no, I think I'm good for the moment. Okay. I wish there was more than that, yeah. Yeah. You bet. I mean, I, I want agree. something tangible in my hand that I can break down. Hey, guys, and if you have problems with that. it, I get it. I would, too. I just... I would, too, but it doesn't exist for we're this. Not, for, if, if, we, if, we, if we say we're behind this, and however which way that is, we're not, we're not saying we're approving the salary. We're not approving any of that stuff. We're, Correct. We're approving the idea. You're approving the idea. You're approving the concept that it could be as much of a $25,000 a year contribution. Hopefully not. Hopefully on the lower side of that. And you're approving at least this marriage, so to speak, with the city 
to hopefully maybe to come across and resolve some mutual problems. But it's going to take the city and the school at this point, as we're focusing this program and the range of punishment, when I've got to have the cooperation, especially from the, from the school. And maybe a little more open dialogue with all of us would be great. Mm -hmm. I even knowing that this was on the table until but, I get this. So in reality, you're looking at doing it for six months. I don't know. No, we're, we're well, looking, I'm looking for a commitment for six months. I'm looking to do it for a long time. Right. Yeah. Right. That's right. what I mean, y'all's standpoint, you're looking at that. And if we approve it, this just gives him the go ahead to work with our attorney to work and, to, and bring all, all, all the facets of it together. And then we will try it January 3rd. And I know you're looking at the finance. A lot of people might not think it's a lot of money, but you know we're all sitting there and wondering what's our cuts going to be this year. And so, but yeah, he brings up a good point on the stuff of where it eventually would pay off. Our average into membership. this with our grades, with you know, and stuff like that. It's it ties in. If we get the student here, we get a, we get money for their attendance. They're obviously going to be on free or reduced lunch, so we get Title One money. You know, so if we're out twelve thousand five hundred dollars at the most this year, because it'd be a six, it'd be starting in January, right? It'd starting into the goal would be starting in January, and that'd be a pretty nice event because you're finishing up some really big projects. Because right now, your your voters or your base here know, you know what we are spending twenty six percent more on our property taxes. Where we're getting, boom, and then you have. We will get as much press as we can on this because we want to scare every person we could that could potentially come through this program. But we make this big renewed push. And I just think it's such a positive thing for the community. I mean, when it hits the paper, or if the community area, knows one's out there, because I can remember we had people calling when I was over there and said, "Hey, you know, there's kids out here at the Nichols Park, knowing that they had a truancy officer." That, you know, I see kids up and down the street. Oh, well, they should be in school. That's the first thing I always say. Why are they not in school? I go to other towns and see kids during the day. Yeah. I'm your bikes. I'm like, yeah. Banks had a truancy thing years ago, and they put some parents in jail. I think they went to the DA, but I remember reading in that Milwaukee paper that they, were, the parents had had their warning and notice, and, and a couple of them served a little. I don't know. I mean, they probably bailed out with that. Does anybody know a noble stance on this? I think at Mr. Noble. Uh, I've attended all the meetings with him, and he's he's very much in support of this. Um, he feels like the we want to be like to begin with the truancy system is, and then obviously uh, hopefully grow the program to more um, help in the schools. Uh, with what Ms. Duncan brought up, we brought that up too. Uh, you know, eventually move toward. You know, if they uh, say as a couple of young people in the, in the a five at school will be charged with, uh, you know, assault and, mm -hmm. or maybe not assault, but like, you know, something, you know, disturbing the peace, something like that, and have to go before and leave for that and, and, and do that and, and probably face some monetary consequence for that. Uh, but he feels like uh, the very beginning of it with truancy would be great. Um, Next month, I'm going to present to you guys uh, our dropout rate. And uh, since I've come here, uh, our dropout rate is going to grow for the first time from that last year. It's going to grow. And one of the ways to keep dropouts. And what was it last year? Last year, we had about three kids. Well, year four last, we had about three kids drop out. This last year, we had, uh, I got to confirm my numbers again. It's on my computer. But it's somewhere between eight to twelve kids that dropped out. These same kids are coming to court, and the parents are with them. And I remember there's a family that had a eighth grader and a sixth grader, both girls, and the same parent, and it let them slowly do the virtual school and then just drop out. And they say their kids don't get it. That's not true. They're too lazy to get their kids there to get it. That's what it amounts. And if we can cut that, because a lot of these kids will screw up during middle school, and by the time they're in high school, they have no choice but to end up in alternative school. And alternative school has its purpose. I'm not knocking any of it, but it needs to have the children that are in there that are intended to, not because that was a career choice, because I had some attendance issues early on. And, and Brad's probably looking at about two kids this year on the last year's 
<laughs> it starts, it, the problems are, are going further and further down the line. You can actually begin to identify, uh, Kelly and I met with Luke, uh, and Mr. Wine did. Kelly told me that she can start to identify almost immediately about fifth grade yeah. where students are going to be problematic. And I've never spent any time in elementary, so. Uh, you can tell. And Ms. Duncan has. Uh, fifth grade, the kids start making some um, some decisions, whether their parents are, are knowledgeable of that decision or not. Those well, and, and they're decisions. raised in the system, and they're going to play in the system, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I taught, for instance, I told one that has been in juvenile jail for, I think he's been dismissed now, you know, I said, it's not really for me to tell you this, but life sucks sometimes, and you've got to want to rise above it. And if we can do something positive to help them, if they would provide it with us or see something positive. Yeah. You know, and then maybe we some of the information that we're acquiring through the families that are wanting to participate, maybe that we get maybe a greater level of participation from some of the church groups that we can direct some of their focus. Here are the ones that are really fighting and really want to participate in their kids' class. Here's some of their, you know, the deficiencies, or here are some of the things they need. What a better way to kind of help channel some of that to the people that are really deserving. Yeah, I think it's wonderful. All right. Any more questions for Mr. Luke? Mr. Gaynor? That's fine. So if this were approved today, are we approving uh, you to go ahead to seek out an officer and hire someone? Or are we approving the development of a program? I need you to approve the development of the program because I want to have that final agreement ready to sign before you, I ask you to sign and to financially commit. And when you do go to commit, you'll have the financial responsibility there, how much you intend to spend, a lot more of the details, maybe the criteria of the program. And then that, that, <coughs> that's what would be approved. Would be approved at, an, at a later time. Yes, ma'am, but I guess here I'm wanting the good faith spirit of, yes, we're going to move forward because I'm going to put a lot of time into this now. And it's not the city's, it's not here, it's mine. And I just don't want to spend my wheels in. If there's a legitimate problem with it, I get it and it shouldn't go in. But I, I, if you vote tonight, I at least want that. As long as I can continue to tell you this is what it is and I can show you, I'd want you to continue to participate. Tracy, you said that you were in a, when you left and went to McAllister, yes. they started this. So was it the year you got there? Yes, yeah, so that would have been 2011. So when you got there in 2011, they brought in a truancy officer in 2011. Mm -hmm. How did that affect the teachers? What would those teachers say in, two, like the ones that were in there in 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, what would those teachers say to us right now? That, that was probably one of the best things that happened to him because especially the administrators they had somebody to call to help them get those kids there so I, I, I specifically want to know about the teachers not the administrators um, most of the teachers had an awesome relationship with officer Campbell mm -hmm. um, he was actually my neighbor we had offices next door to each other mm -hmm. and um, if they were having problems in class with the student they a lot of times would go to Chuck. So, so would you say it improved their their lives, their professional lives at the school? Yes, especially at the high school and in the junior high in particular. I would have liked it at fifth grade level. I will say they had a. He also did a lot in the early childhood. I know that seems silly, but there was a lot of with um, domestic situations because that's what you get a lot in the early childhood setting for with you know this parent that parent mm -hmm. I have custody now mm -hmm. I don't have custody and Chuck was the one that usually handled those types of situation for the school um, because as anybody that's been administration before those become extremely sticky situations um, so that was something else that he did as well which in turn helped the teachers because they didn't have to deal with it right a lot as well even as in fifth grade, you know, the kids display so many anger. You know, if they could even talk to him, just talk to an officer like a counseling type of thing, I think would, you know, a lot of these kids would look up to it. I just think it's. I will say, our 
are probably hardest cases. Um, Chuck was their best friend. Mm -hmm. They would come sit in his office just to. A lot of these kids have talk. never had a role model That's in their right. life that doesn't walk out or doesn't leave. They were either in my office or Chuck's. But the school can apply to get their cleat like McAllister did if that's something you wanted when you wanted an officer here all the time instead of them being a city employee. As it stands right now, it has to go through the city because they have to be hired by a chief and be part of a force to be cleat certified. Yeah, but you still don't get out of that problem with it. even if you wanted to get a full-time resource officer, I still have to be able to have jurisdiction over right. these people. And that's where I have to have a city employee. We can't go with an on-staff person right, right. now. I will say the other thing that he did as well was he helped with security at events. Mm -hmm. That that won't be provided in this. That will be handled yeah, just like and Mr. Noble is aware of that. We talked about that. That is. You know. mm -hmm. I can just say from my perspective, when we have <clears throat> kids with multiple truancy issues, all the only recourse I have is to first call DHS and then OJA. And my response is sorry. Sorry, mm -hmm. that is my response right now yeah, because their resources are just as stretched as everyone else's. Same response they give me. Yeah. I had a 14-year-old runaway that had ran away from his great grandmother, and the two Dewar PD finally got him. He'd been gone for six weeks, so I thought I've got his little rear. So I drive over, and I call OJA. And OJ says because he didn't commit a felony, mm -hmm. there's nothing they could do to him. Mm -hmm. And these kids know that. Mm -hmm. They know that. Their family is involved in criminal activity. A lot of their parents get them behind the criminal activity. You've got to get to the parents. Mm -hmm. yeah, we had one family who would send, she would send our kids in to, when we had Anthony's, to steal, you know, and the kids would come to school and write about it, you know. Mom sent us in and we stole this and that, you know. I mean, they, they do involve their kids. And if we can save just one or two little lives, you know, I mean, just help them carry on. If we can better their life, then they may get out of the system and, and better their self. And, and it may be a deterrent of future behavior as well, because if this thing starts picking up and it's well known that it can settle a number of things, there may be people either willing to come out or people maybe to, to you know, deter from that behavior. But it could be a way that a lot of children can express. Rick, what is the data membership? What do we get paid per student for average data membership? You know? Well, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure on the yearly, you know, I know it's about thirty-eight hundred dollars a year. And you know, so we keep them in the full time. And then our title fund when we feed them, so we get title money. Our title money goes according to the number that it fed to the cafeteria the free or program. I guess to all of them. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lake, if we decide to go ahead and, and partner with uh, the city uh, tonight. Can we come back in about two months in our December meeting if we have everything worked out, get all the logistics worked out, the legal obligations between both parties, our, our attorney and yourself and the city and Mr. Noble and all feel good about it. Can we come back and say in December we'll put that in as a pilot program for six months and see how that works out? That's my goal. My goal is if you can give the general approval tonight to let me start working with everyone some more to start refining this and putting these ideas and objectives down and put the rationale of how it's going to work, what the participation is. Hopefully we can approve this. And if it's too early for December, it may be January. Yeah. But, I mean, that's going to be the timing I'm shooting for. Okay. But I, I'm not asking for a check to be written until you have this until you've approved that you think that this makes sense. Like Brandy said, well, the motion would be to or develop a right. program. Create. 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 Okay. The go-ahead for a development. Okay. And in the meantime, so with that kind of vote... Hired at this point. No. no one's being hired, but your administrators can say to the prospective parents that we're in the process of getting this truancy court form. So we can start at least maybe getting some... They, they can get their bluff in on some, but there's not many anymore they can without right. doing something about it. That's right. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. Any more? Thank you, Mr.